I want to welcome everyone to His Glory uh, Ministry as we continue our series in the book of Isaiah. Tonight we will be in Isaiah 23, and as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher in the living Word of God, which is uh, our Savior Christ the Lord. Okay, the prophet Isaiah, this is called the, bur the Burden Against Tyre and Sidon. Tyre and Sidon were uh, two areas... Uh, in the Phoenician Empire that were uh, uh, traded area, very rich area, very uh, high commerce. So you get your ships in and out. So all the material of, the, of that portion of the world, Tyre and Sidon, these two cities were huge commerce places. So the riches of the world were, were traded here. And that's why God is going to have judgment on Tyre and Sidon. Uh, because of their, uh, their their love for material, their love for money, their love for pride, their love for everything other than the Most High God, Elohim. Uh, and so we, we, we know this, this literally happened in two, two parts, that, uh, that, that they were restricted for 70 years, exactly uh, the way the prophet was told, Isaiah was told by God, and we'll sh share that with you when we get to that point of the scripture. And also they were destroyed. Uh, amazing today, if you Google Tyre and Sidon, Tyre and Sidon are up in the area of Lebanon today. If you Google Tyre and Sidon there, you might see some fishermen, but the, it's in uninhabited land, exactly the way the Lord said would happen. And you go back all the way to the history of the time of Isaiah. Um, and even before that with David, King David and, and, and his son Solomon, they traded with the Phoenicians to bring, to bring merchandise in, 2 Samuel 5, 11, 1 Kings 5, 8, and 9. Um, so that was, was a well-established commerce area for many, many, many years, a power, if you will. We know the harlot uh, Jezebel, and this is all fitting in, too, that she was a Phoenician, that is King Ahab's wicked wife who uh, t brought up the false gods of Baal, and uh, Astros to come up against uh, Elijah and, uh, and chase Elijah into, uh, into the woods. And um, so there is, all this is coming together and how God is going to tie Tyre uh, 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 Ty and Sidon together with Jezebel and his last, uh, last day end that when Christ comes in the book of Revelation, we're going to see in Revelation 18, uh, verses 17 through 22, he's talking about Tyre and Sidon and Babylon, Babylon uh, Jezebel, the, the harlot will be, will be uh, the, the most commerce is being done in this uh, modern day Babylon will be destroyed. Um, so that's where uh, we're going to get to. Let's get into the scripture. Um, Isaiah 23, 1. The burden against Tyre, wail you ships of Tarshish, for it laid waste, so there is no house, no harbor, for the land of Cyprus is revealed to them. So um, in the verses First through seven, one through seven. Uh, there's great whaling. Uh, this was a great shipping port. Uh, some will tell you that Tarshish is uh, Spain. Uh, whether other scholars will tell you that Tarshish uh, may indeed be Great Britain because of Tarshish and 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 ten. That's where they went to get the ten, and that was the the, the root word for Great Britain. There's where the ten was on the other side. We see that in the Book of Jonah too. They were going to a a place farther off to get uh, some of these uh, natural resources. Uh, like 10. So either way, God is judging them. And uh, Cyprus, we know where Cyprus, it's sometimes called Kittim in the, in, uh, in the scripture. Okay, be still you inhabitants of the coastland, you merchants of Sidon, whom those who cross the sea have filled. So again, the whole world is, is, is using uh, Tyre and Sidon, the Egyptians, the, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, and uh, everyone's using this great port of, of great wealth. And they're putting their trust in the wealth in these nations instead of the Most High God, Elohim, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We see the same thing going to happen. Again, history repeats itself. God always foreshadows what he, he, he's going to do in the last days of what he's already done in the past. So this is a type, if you will, a same type of what's going to happen with modern-day Babylon in the future when Christ comes and destroys the commerce. The, the, the Antichrist will arise, as we know through Scripture. He'll be an Assyrian. And it's my conjecture he will be a he will be a Muslim. He'll have a false prophet that is bringing Christianity and Islam together and saying let's all get along. Uh, even in even bringing in Judaism because uh, in in the Quran the, the the Quran says that the Torah and the Gospels are holy books. So there's a little bit of everything 
uh, that you can put together and have a false prophet come in and try to get these three world religions to get uh, to get together. So that's where the false prophet, the Antichrist, and Satan himself, that will be literally in a modern-day Babylon. That's where I'll be a commerce spot, and Jesus is going to come back and say, whoa, 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 uh, woe to Babylon, and justice will be served because there is one God. His name is Elohim, and you, there's only one way to heaven, to, to, to paradise, and that through the blood of the Savior, Jesus Christ is the Lord. And everyone comes against Jesus Christ, no matter what religion you come from, even though they may say the Torah or the Gospels are part of their holy book. When it comes to the name of Jesus Christ, everybody, everybody gets offended. And if you're getting offended by the name of Jesus Christ, that tells you something's there. Even the demons we see in the Gospels say he is the Son of God. And we even hear God himself in the Gospels say, that's my beloved Son, this day I'm well pleased. We see in, in Psalm. David is talking about the Son of God. In, the, in Psalm 2, we see uh, a dialogue of what the history of the world would be. The, the kings of the earth you know, getting their riches and, and trying to scheme. And this is exactly what was happening in Tyre and Sidon. J God is telling us in Psalm 2 through, the, through David what the history of the world was. That each, each power has always done everything for wealth and power and, 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 and build up. But he who, is in, he who is in heaven laughs, is what Psalm 2 says. That's the Father. And then kiss the Son is talking about um, Jesus Christ will be the one that comes in with a rod iron. So you, and, and then the last part is kiss the Son uh, because he, he will come back and judge the world in, in a nutshell. So if you read Psalm 2, it's, it's a very, very fascinating. You get God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the second of the Godhead, and third, God the Holy Spirit. All three are intertwining together in Psalm 2 in this magnificent psalm. Okay, so that's where we're at. For the sea has spoken, the strengths of the sea, saying, I do not labor for bring forth children, neither do I rear young men, nor bring up virgins. So he, the, 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 uh, the judgment is coming upon them. Again, virgins are a sign of purity. Um, we, we as believers in Jesus Christ were called virgins. The, the, the parable of the, of the ten virgins, five that had their lamps lit, five that didn't, doesn't mean that we uh, have not sinned, but we've been washed clean because of the blood of Jesus Christ, and those sins are forgotten. So therefore, in the eyes of the Father, who is holy, we are virgin We are virgin because Christ wiped away those sins once and for all. Praise his name. When the report reaches Egypt, they also will be in agony at the report of Tyre. Egypt's going to be upset because this is a great trading partner. I mean, their commerce d d depends on getting their trade uh, to this particular uh, area, and it's, you know, all interchange, interchanged together because based on the resources and Tyre and Sidon were strategically placed up so that you could get there by ships to haul merchandise. So this was a great strategic area at the time because they didn't have, uh, you know, they, they didn't have uh, trains and all kinds of airplanes to, to get merchandise quicker like we do today um, in, in society. Similar to what it would be today that if one major empire uh, country went into a recession or depression, uh, whether it be a China or the United States, it would it would bring the other countries around the world to its knees. The European Union would be another example of that because the world is so uh, reliant on world trade. It's similar, but this was more of a regional trade, um, but it was the center of all the merchandise. And again, they're putting their focus on the merchandise and the world and trade and not who provides all things the Most High God. And that's why God's judgment is coming. He's very patient. He's given them every opportunity to confess their sins. And he is loving and faithful. And he will, he will, he will listen to them. And he will make their ways well. But they won't listen to him because they have a hardened heart. They're thinking about finances. They're thinking about getting ahead. They're thinking about more riches. I mean, how much is enough? You look at some of these people in the world today that are just plain evil. And they get billions of dollars, millions of dollars, and they do it in the most unmoral ways. And you think, is it worth it to sell your soul for eternity just to have riches and hurt people and to literally have certain people that are trying to destroy people, to destroy economies, to destroy nations um, with uh, economic terror and uh, military terror? 
This is just something that the Lord is going to judge. And we as Christians, you know, our wealth is not from here. Our riches are in Christ Jesus. Our wealth is what we're stored up with Christ in a heavenly realm. And we have to stay true to his name. We have to stay true to his word and, and be obedient to his word. And that's what he calls us to do because the world thinks of us as meek. But Christ tells us in the Beatitudes, it's the meek will inherit the earth. It's the meek in Christ because we don't fight that battle. It's not that we're weak. It's that we let Christ fight that battle for us. We're not caught up in the worldly ways to riches and pride and, and getting all the glory for ourselves. The glory, his glory, goes to the most high God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise his holy name. Uh, who has taken counsel against Tyre, the crowning city, whose merchandise merchants are princes, whose traders are the honorable of the earth? So again, they're thinking about these are the rich, these are the most established, these are the who, the who's who of the world. Kind of like we do today, you know, if you're a millionaire, a billionaire, or you're running a big company, or you're a movie star, or a rock star, or whatever the kind of star you are. We, 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 we look at even uh, reality TV show stars and say, oh boy, this person is just, this is it. This is what society has built up to be the, 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 the best of the best. When that's not what God looks at. God looks at the heart. God looks at our heart. Solomon had all the riches of the world. And he tells us in Ecclesiastes, it was all for vain. It, it, it drove him the wrong way. He sinned against the Lord in three ways. He went against the Torah by raising up a, 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 a gold and silver for himself instead of giving it out to his glory for the glory of the Lord. He stored up horses. When God said, do not store up horses and chariots because you rely on me for your military, I am the Lord of hosts, the military uh uh, the military uh, uh, title of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and God the Father. And, he, and that's why he didn't want him to have horses and chariots. He, and then what Solomon do? He got horses and chariots, brought them up. And, and the last thing is he says, you have one wife. you married to one. That's what it's always been in the Torah. One wife, one man, one woman come together to create a, a perfect will with the Father. And we see Solomon had 700 wives, and he did this for peace purposes. So he'd marry the the princess of a daughter of a certain country so that way that, that country would not come against Israel because they wouldn't want to come against their family. So he had 700 wives. I don't even know how you could even possibly uh, do that. And um, so the, they, they, the pagan wives brought in their, their false gods and they got Solomon who was the wisest and the richest man ever. And then Solomon finally gets it right towards the end and he says in the book of Ecclesiastes, it was all vain. It's only what we do for the Lord that matters. And David got it right before Solomon was building the temple. David on his deathbed, he, God told him that because he had blood on his hands, he could not build the temple. But David says, I will give my wealth that you gave me, Lord, to build this temple. And David gave the equivalent of about $3 billion worth of gold in today's funds out of his own pocket to build the, the temple. And he said, Lord, that money is from you and that money is for you because I could not gain any of that without you, Lord. And he gave the glory to God and gave it back to the Lord. And that's what the Lord wants us to do with the blessings he gives us. We're supposed to sow more, sow the, his glory all over the world, whether it's to the poor, whether it's to the famine, whether it's to Bibles, whether it's, it's the widows, whether it's to bring the gospel from east to west to north to south. We are to sow the seed and be that light of Jesus Christ. Praise his name. Okay, verse 10. Overflow through the, the land like the river. O daughter of Tarshish, there is no more strength. Again, Tarshish may or may not be Great Britain. It's in that area. Some say Spain. Great. Uh, I tend to lean towards it's Great Britain because that ties into a very important Ezekiel 38 and 39. Um, that could people say that uh, the United States is never referenced in the end times. I believe it is in Ezekiel 38 and 39 of being the young lions of Tarshish. And the young lion, that lion is the, is the, is the uh, emblem of Great Britain, was the emblem of Great Britain. And who was born out of Great Britain was the United States. So we would be considered that young lion. That's for a different teaching that we'll teach uh, in Ezekiel when we get to that. He stretched out his hand over the sea. He shook the kingdoms. The Lord, Jehovah, has given commandment against Canaan to tr destroy his strongholds. So the Lord has taken vengeance. Exactly the way Christ will come down and, and take vengeance in Babylon and all over the world once and for all when the nations of the world come up against the Lord in the Valley of Megiddo. 
the kings of the east and the Antichrist group coming from and, and, and trying to come in on Jerusalem in the Valley of Megiddo. And if you haven't seen the, the Megiddo Valley, it's wonderful. It's a great, huge place. And the United, IDF's air force is underneath the, 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 the Valley of Megiddo. And I'm from Mark, Mount Carmel, where Elijah uh, took on the Baal prophets of Jezebel and wipe them out. You can see the beautiful view of where the end time battle is going to be in the valley of Megiddo, or in Hebrew, Harmageddon. That's where we get the word Armageddon. He said, you will rejoice no more, you will oppressed virgin daughter of Sidon. Uh, arise, across over to Cyprus, there also will have no rest. Before the land of the Chaldeans, these people was not. Assyria founded it from wild beasts of the desert. That they set up the, the towers, they raised up the palaces and brought it to ruin. <clears throat> so he's saying all this stuff is going to be brought to ruin. And, and we'll get to the 70 in just a minute. Wail, you ships of Tarshish, for your strength is laid waste. The Lord, as in Psalm 2, as, as the nations rage, the, he who is in heaven sits and laughs. God sits and laughs. God the Father and the, the Son and Jesus Christ sits and laughs and says, you nations, you knuckleheads who think you are going to outwise me, the God of the universe, I created all things, I see the beginning, I see the end, and I am all powerful. And you're trying to manipulate and, and, and steal and, 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 and be deceitful. I have ultimate power, and he's making his power known here. He says, enough. God is a patient God, but enough's enough when you do destroy and wicked and evil things for self and bringing up pride. It's the pride of sin that the Lord God Almighty cannot take. That was the sin of, of, of Satan being thrown out of, the, out of heaven. It was his pride because he says, I will be like the Most High God. And all through the histories, we've had antichrists they're, 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 they're come up, being the first, being Nimrod, who literally built a tower of Babel. Babel and that's where they actually found that in, in Saddam Hussein, right outside of Babylon. And uh, all that stuff is being res uh, restored as we speak. The nation or the city of Babylon is being restored as we speak. Saddam Hussein spent millions of dollars. He actually found the... Uh, the banquet hall and the book of Daniel with the handwriting on the wall when the Medes and Persians came in, according to what the Lord said on the wall, and, the, and uh, took over Babylon. So this was being referred to Babylon destroyed. Uh, well, let's get to it, then I'll, we'll tell you the, the history of how precise God's word is. Now, it came to pass in that day that Tyre will be forgotten 70 years. 70 is the number of a generation. You ever always see 70 in the scripture is always a number of a generation. So he's punishing the generations for their sin exactly 70 years. And it was 70 years that the, the Israelites were in captivity in Babylon to the day. The Lord is precise to the day. And the reason was they went 490 years of not obeying the Lord. And that was 70 Shemitahs. Remember, Shemitah is every seven years you're let, supposed to re, re, uh, let the debts go back and you, uh, you, you let the land heal. You've got to honor the Lord. So they went 490 years, 70 Shemitahs. And the penalty in the Torah is seven times is the punishment. So seven divided by 490 is 70. And that's why it was one generation that was punished for 490 years of not uh, obeying uh, the 70 Shemitahs. God is absolutely precise. So when you see a number, it always means something very specific and in God always does it to the day. And we'll show you in just a second. Take a harp about the city, you forgotten harlot. Again, the harlot, Jezebel, the harlot of Babylon in the end days. The harlot that the, is, is sold their soul for the world, whether it's sexual immorality, whether it's financial gain, whether it's power, or any of the iniquities of sin that have turned against the most high God, they will be dealt with. And God calls them the harlot. That is the worst. And make sweet melody, swing, sing many songs that you have been, that you may be remembered. And it shall be at the end of 70 years that the Lord, Jehovah, will deal with Tyre. She will return to her hire and commit fornication and all the kingdoms of the world on the face of the earth. She will keep, again, a sexual, uh, being sexual immorality. God always uses sex as a theme of the wedding, saying that you're not being faithful. 
God has always wanted to him, us to be married to him and be faithful and obedient to his word and be united. And when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come into us. We become the kingdom of God, as Jesus tells us in the, in the Gospels. We are the living kingdom of God. And he who is in us is stronger than he who is in the world, meaning Satan and all his demonic buddies and allies. So that when God is in us in the three part. We can overcome the world, and that's what God always wants. He wants, the, wants us to have that, have that agape love, have that relationship, and be obedient to him. Because once you know his word and you love him, you want to be obedient to the, the one you adore, and that is God. So that's always why he's talking fornication. They're, they're running with their lust instead of real love. Real love is not lust. Real love is heart and soul and mind. And that's why Jesus says the greatest is love the Lord your God with all your heart. No, it's heart first, then it's soul, because it's heart, the soul, and then your mind. You got to go through the heart, then it becomes the soul, which is your essence. That is who you are. Each DNA molecule is different because each person's soul is different. And God reaches us through the heart, and then touches our soul through our unique DNA and calls us sons and daughters of the Most High, and then it goes into our mind. And that's how we're to read the scripture, with our heart, then our soul, and then our mind. Not our mind. Most people get the Bible wrong because they try to do it intellectually. The Bible is not an intellectual study. The Bible is a love story. It is a, built on a heart, an agape relationship from our heart to the Most High's heart, and that establishes our soul. And then when our soul and spirit are in tune with the Most High God, through the living Christ and the Holy Spirit and God the Father, we are with him, and it, come, it fills our mind with his word. And Jesus always tells us, fight the enemy with the word. What is the word? The word of God, the dual-edged the dual, the dual sword. And that's why it's so important to be in the word of God, because God tells us over and over, do you want to get to know me? You have to know my word. And that's how we get to know him. Jesus Christ is the living word. So if we want to know the living Christ, we need to read his word. He is the living word. He comes back with the title of the living word, the king of kings and lord of hosts. Again, the military, lord of hosts, just like Jehovah God is doing right here, the Christ, the Messiah, the, God, the son of God, the second of the Godhead will come back and take ownership, issue in the Davidic covenant and have an everlasting kingdom of the land that was given as a covenant, an everlasting covenant by God the Father through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the, he will fulfill all the law and the prophets. Her again and her pay will set apart from the Lord. It will not be treasured nor laid up for her gain will be for those who dwell before the Lord to eat sufficiently and for fine clothing. Okay, so the judgment came on the Lord. The Babylonians destroyed uh, Tyre and Sidon, and again, in 2312 is referencing what we said in Revelation 18, that this is going again, this is symbolizing what's going to happen again in Babylon, and what hap Jesus uses, <coughs> excuse me, the reference is Tyre and Sidon, it's going to be like Tyre and Sidon to Babylon, and, and whoa, whoa, whoa is Babylon, it's fallen, it's fallen, it's fallen, and uh, the judgment will come from an end on the, t the commerce and wealth, and doing all the things for the world instead of doing the things for the Most High God. But it was between 585, 572 BC that the Babylonians finally did destroy Tyre, according to what the Lord, the, war, the Lord said. And the Lord put a 70 year restriction. The Assyrians restricted trade in that area of, uh, of uh, <coughs> excuse me, Tyre for exactly 70 years, exactly to the scripture. And that was between 763 BC to the day, that restriction on trade that history shows us that it indeed happened. Again, the more we read the scripture, the more we see God fulfills exactly what he says he, does, he, he has. And his word is truth. And he written things before the beginning of time. And they all will be fulfilled. And that's why we know that all the fulfillment of Jesus Christ's prophecies that have happened already today through the blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. The next group, over 800 references to the Christ that are still to be. Jesus has fulfilled every one of them in detail the first coming. So there's no doubt he's coming the second time to fulfill the rest of them. Because the more you get in the word, the more you see the loving God, and more you see that he is absolutely precise, and this word was written outside of time. It was written only by the God of the universe, the Elohim, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, that is Isaiah 23, 
We pray that this has been a blessing to you and may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you again and always until next time on his glory. God bless.